Good morning, everybody. Just going to give everyone a few minutes to pop on. I'm just going to share this to a few pages while you're doing that. Make sure you just say hi and let me know that you can hear me, see me, everything's working. All right. All right, so I'm just going to jump in and just, like I said, pop on and say hi. And let me just sit here. Okay. Make sure my comments are working. Let me just check that my comments are working because I know I had an issue with that last time. So let me just see. All right, so in the meantime, I'm just gonna get started. So today, if you haven't seen uh, the first video, I'm doing a series on working with crystals and I'm trying to kind of cover a lot of different bases with that. And I just wanted to share as much information as I could with people because it's something that I'm really passionate about and I always have a lot of requests for that. So I decided to just do a series of videos for people to kind of give them a good overview of a lot of different things with stones. And I'm really trying also to just include things that maybe people don't usually hear about or things that aren't readily available. Because there is so much information on stones out there, but I feel like there's still kind of a lack of other information that I think would be helpful. So I'm trying to really kind of fill in those gaps with these videos. So today I wanted to just go over some recommendations. I kind of just let spirit guide me today to pick certain stones that I just felt pulled to talk about today. So I'm going to just go into some detail about some stones that I recommend. And I know I had said um, some people were asking for specific things for stones. So a lot of these should cover that. And if they don't, of course, let me know. And I'll probably be doing more than one of these types of videos with the recommendations because I could probably make about 100. Uh, so I'm going to just go with what I have right now. Um, like I said, they, it should cover a decent amount of the stuff that people did request me to talk about. And of course, if there's anything while I'm doing this video, uh, if there's anything that you want me to recommend a stone for, whether that be mental, physical, spiritual, whatever, make sure you put that in the comment box and I will try to get to that today. And if I don't get it to it today, I will do another video and make sure that I cover that for you, okay? And then also, uh, any kind of questions whatsoever about crystals, please share in the comment box as well. And I will be happy to cover that. And if I'm not covering it today, like I said, I'll do probably other videos. And again, just to kind of recap for people that maybe are new to these videos, um, I'm hoping to do a few different things. The last one I did, I kind of covered more of a scientific basis on stones. So I went over like different formations that you can find to kind of give a good foundation for everything. And, um, and then I'm going to be doing some videos like this one of just recommendations of crystals and kind of just talking about stones that I feel very connected to. And then I was going to do a uh, guided meditation to help people connect with a crystal on a deeper level, which I think will be really, really helpful for people. And I'm also going to be covering, like I was saying, uh, how to help people pick stones, because I know that's something that I think a lot of people struggle with. So I wanted to just kind of share stuff that I do and things that I find really can be helpful for that. And I'm also going to do actually someone 
had been talking to me about, um, or they were commenting about man-made crystals. And I actually thought that was a really interesting topic. And I'm, I'm going to do a whole video on just man-made crystals, because I think that's a really interesting topic. And I think there's a kind of this misconception that if something is man-made, that they're like bad. And they're actually not. And there's a lot of really amazing stones that are man-made that you can use. So uh, I have quite a few that I would love to talk about. So I'm definitely going to do a video on that. And I'm also going to do a video on um, inclusions that you can find in crystals and then expand more on different kind of quartz formations that you can find. So as you can see, it's going to be like a lot of different things. So I'm trying to kind of cover all my bases. And of course, if there's anything that you're thinking that I missed or that I'm kind of leaving out, please feel free to let me know in the comments. And I'm going to try to make a video on that too, if I think that it's something that would be really good to add to the series. So just say hi, say hello, and let me know that you can hear me <laughs> so I know that this is working. Because I know sometimes this stuff is a little weird. Um, okay. So I think I'm going to just dive right in. So I have a lot of stuff here with me today. And I'm trying to think what I want to talk about first. So I think I'll go into stuff for relaxation and anxiety right now. So I have quite a few stones that I personally really, really love for anxiety. Um, one of the, uh, hi Sherry, one of the best rules for that I find is any mineral that contains lithium is really, really good for anxiety. It just is an all around good way to know that it's going to be helpful for that. And there's a lot of minerals out there that do contain it. I'm not covering every single one today. I'm just going to cover maybe the more common ones. Um, so I'll show you here. The most common ones that you'll find is lithium quartz, which I have right here. And they're often going to have this kind of purplish or dark purple to red coloring inside them as an inclusion. You can see that there. And I love lithium quartz. I absolutely love it. I think that, again, I, which I had shared before, the jewelry that I make is I put stones in resin which puts the minerals under an extreme amount of pressure at all times, and that amplifies its energy. So when you have inclusions in quartz, it's a very similar effect, because it's basically, again, you're having a different type of mineral that's inside quartz, which is gonna amplify it. So that's why I think this is such an effective stone, because quartz in itself is going to really help amplify the healing properties of the lithium inside it. So I highly recommend this for anybody that has anxiety of any kind stress, anything that, you know, if you have a really hard time kind of unwinding at the end of the day, maybe if you have just a lot of demands in your life, you know, you have a really heavy work schedule, these can be really helpful for just calming you down at the end of the day. I also recommend actually putting them even in a bath. And that's something that I really like to do because similar to the resin and quartz, uh, water amplifies the energy and you can really feel it. So I really recommend that as well as just a way to try to kind of create this ritual for yourself to calm down. So then there's that. So then the other one that I think is probably the most popular and well known is Lapidolite. Now, this is actually a mixture of mica, or I'm sorry, muscovite and Lapidolite. So I have this like slab here. Now Lapidolite is usually a kind of purplish color like this, but you'll typically find them in like polished stones or things like that. I also find this stone really, really effective for stress of any kind. It's really good at kind of calming any frayed nerves and really helping you recenter. This is really good for, I think, people that have a lot of panic attacks and deal with anxiety that's like very kind of debilitating. It can be a very helpful stone to just carry on you all the time. It's also really helpful. I actually keep this right next to my bed. It's a very helpful stone to have if you have a hard time falling asleep. Again, if you have a hard time just kind of unwinding. And muscovite's actually interesting because that's something that you'll often find as a mineral that's like included with other minerals or that it'll be growing on other minerals. I actually have a, an aquamarine that has muscovite growing on it too. And what's interesting about muscovite is that that's a little bit more of a mental stone and can really help kind of bring clarity and uh, kind of fine tune your mind. So that's why this mixture is actually really cool and I think actually very helpful for any kind of work environment even, or if you're working on a really stressful project with like a big deadline, uh, where, cause the combination of the lithium from the lapidolite and then the muscovite, it kind of helps relax the mo emotional and physical body 
and even relax the mind, and then it helps the mind feel more activated and clear. So that's a really cool uh, combination. And actually, this is very common to find these minerals with each other. So that's something that I also really recommend, uh, especially, like I said, for like work or anything like that, too. So there's that. And then another stone for stress that I really like is hematoid quartz, which I'll show you right here. So this is just hematite inside quartz. And it has this kind of nice uh, brick red color. And I find this stone very soothing for me. So often I'll usually like hold this in one hand and lithium quartz in the other hand. And I find it really does help calm me down. Hi, Donnie. And the thing with hematite, which I'm also gonna talk about, I and mean, I might as well just share it right now. Um, hematite, I think, is a pretty well-known crystal. So you got it right here. I have this magnet magnetized one, and then just a regular one. Hematite is an excellent stone for people that are very much in like the mental space all the time and have a very hard time grounding themselves. It's very good for people that just are often find themselves spaced out, which would be me. <laughs> That's something that I dealt with a lot, especially when I was first opening up to all of you know, my abilities and everything. Hematite was something that was very helpful for me because it just helps us kind of remain in our physical body, but it doesn't shut us off from the higher realms either. So it kind of helps pull that energy down and balance us out a little more. So it's just, in general, a really good grounding stone. And it also actually helps with mental clarity in a way because it kind of gets rid of that fog when you're so stuck up here. So I do recommend that just in general for anybody that deals with just being really in their head and having a hard time being present. So that's why, again, like what I was sharing with um, the lithium quartz, that's why the hematoid quartz is really helpful because... Again, it just kind of amplifies the properties of hematite by being in the quartz zone. And then it just also has the qualities of clear quartz, which can just be very soothing, cleansing, and very grounding. So this stone is really, really also one of my favorites for relaxation. And um, I will also put all the stones that I talk about today, I'll put them all in the comments so that everybody can refer to them after. Sherry, does hematite need to be cleansed? Um, it can be. I think it does, yeah. I mean, I cleanse it. It's not one of those stones that I would consider that's like self-cleansing, because there are a few that are like that. So yeah, I think I would cleanse it, especially if you're using it for protection or just to kind of deflect negativity. Sometimes it can get a little clogged up. Um, so yeah, I would cleanse it on a pretty regular basis if you're carrying it with you a lot. So then the next one, um, I guess I'll go into some like heart stones because, or actually, you know what? I have this one first. I forgot. So this is dolomite. And again, I think this is not that well known. And that's why I really wanted to share it today. Because that's something that I really am passionate about is I really try to share stones that people haven't heard about. Because I just feel like for the most part, the knowledge base that's shared or, you know, just stuff that's available in a lot of shops sometimes can be kind of limited. It's not that they're great and good crystals. I mean, that's not the case, but it's just, I think that there's so many other things out there that I think people should be aware of because you never know. I mean, I, I think for me, like I, I love rose quartz, but at the same time, I've been able to find other stones that resonate with the heart center that I just find more effective for me. And that might not be true for everyone, but I just think that it's really helpful to be able to give that information to other people so they just know that there's other options out there and, um, and just more variety within those different tools. So dolomite is a really, really nice mineral. It's a, it contains a lot of magnesium in it, and it's known for being kind of a reset button for the physical and etheric bodies. So just sitting with this when you're feeling really stressed out uh, it can really just help bring that energy down. It can really help just reset your whole system. It's really good for just realigning the chakra system, your auric field, kind of bringing all the layers of the body and mind and spiritual energies into unison with each other. It's very good at balancing that stuff. And it can really help us come back to a state of wholeness and kind of relaxation. And it's very grounding because of that as well. So this was something that I often use when I would be feeling really overwhelmed, when I used to have way worse anxiety. 
So I definitely recommend this for that. Sherry, I wear a bracelet every day. Yeah, I would cleanse it if you wear a bracelet every day. <laughs> Good morning, Ryan. Yeah, so I highly recommend this stone. It's maybe not the prettiest stone, right? But that's the thing. I feel like maybe sometimes these things are overlooked because of that. But there's so many stones that maybe they're not the most attractive or anything, but they can be really effective tools. So for me, that's all I care about for the most part. I mean, I like having pretty stones, but if they're really effective tools to me, I think just go for it. So I really recommend that as well. And then um, for kind of depression, things like that, we can go into a few things here with that. There we go. So one of my favorite stones for kind of depression or any kind of mental illness uh, is ocean jasper. So jasper is all actually part of the quartz family, believe it or not, but there's a ton of variety in the jasper family. There's, I, th I feel like there's constantly new forms of jasper that are always being found. So it's kind of endless, the amount of varieties there are in Jasper, which is pretty cool. And they're all so varied in their properties and what they can do for you. So I highly recommend looking into kind of that world because there's a lot to offer there. And it's also pretty often there's a lot available too. But I think the most common types of Jasper that are known is red Jasper and uh, bumblebee Jasper, which I do have over here. But those are probably some of the more well-known types but ocean jasper actually only comes from madagascar and is this beautiful combination of all kinds of colors and it can just have like this amazing variety in the way it looks the way that it kind of forms these patterns on it it sometimes has these kind of circular patterns as you can see this one has some really beautiful lavender colors in it and this stone is really good for just bringing a sense of joy back to somebody's life. It can really help us kind of shift our focus, shift our attention to gratitude as opposed to this idea of deprivation. It can really just help shift that energy over to a place of gratitude and being able to kind of manifest and bring in more positivity into your life. So it's really, really good if somebody struggles from maybe something like major depressive disorder, which is also something that I've dealt with in the past. It can just really help kind of take us out of that space of, you know, mind when we're thinking we don't have enough, we're lonely, we don't have enough money, we're not happy with our job, whatever that may be. And, you know, often that becomes a cycle and we get very stuck in that. So this stone is very helpful for when we're feeling kind of like we're in these um, ruminating places of just negativity can really help take that excess energy that we're kind of almost wasting or burning into negative thoughts. And it can help kind of replenish that into something positive. And then in general, it's also just very soothing. So that's something that I always really, really loved whenever I was dealing with some kind of depression or anything like that. And then another one. Yeah. Hi, Amanda. Yeah, that's Ocean Jasper. Yeah, and the thing is, is that ocean jasper can look dramatically different between different stones. Like, it, it's almost like a whole rainbow of colors, which is actually really cool. And also, I really love kind of feeling what you're drawn to pattern-wise or color-wise with what's displayed in different options for ocean jasper and really go with what you feel drawn to. But that's, yeah, that's one of the things that I think is really cool about it and also how it's only found in Madagascar, yet it has this amazing variety to it. But again, that's just the thing about Jasper too, in general. It's just this unbelievable variety. So then another stone for depression is uh, Lapido Crockite. And I actually have this, so this is included in quartz, which is kind of rare and difficult to find, but I can try to find some links for you guys if you're ever interested. You can kind of see these little, hi Nikki, these little flecks in here, it's really pretty. I don't know if you can see that well, but it almost has this metallic kind of look to it. I'm actually going to see if I can put a flashlight on this for you so you can see better. Uh, it might just be blinding everyone. <laughs> Sorry. So you can kind of see how it's a little metallic. I know it's a little hard to see. It can be a little tricky, but I think you get the general idea. Yeah, there we go. That's a little better. So Lapita Crockett also is similar to Ocean Jasper in the sense that it, um, it really helps produce a sense of joy 
and kind of the zest for life, zest for living. It can really help shift that thought pattern of negativity and not having enough into abundance and into gratitude and into just noticing things that we usually overlook perhaps or things that we take for granted can really help us focus in on those things and cultivate that energy to really help us just have more vitality and zest for life. So this stone also is very grounding and it's also very activating for the heart center. And it can also really help with create creativity of any kind. If you're feeling like you have some kind of block with creativity, it can be very helpful for kind of inspiration and, and also motivation. So especially for people that have kind of depression that makes them very sluggish or tired all the time, that's definitely something that I used to deal with. And um, this stone can really help give that extra boost of energy for people that deal with that kind of depression. So I highly recommend this. Now, Lapita Crocke also, it can come on its own as just a stone. And then also it comes as inclusions in a lot of crystals. So um, I actually think it's also in Super 7 and uh, or Light 23, pretty sure. And it comes in a lot of other things, but quartz is one of those things. Is there any certain website you trust to purchase from? Yes, I, um, I have quite a few. So I can share that in the comments, Amanda, at the end of the video. Um, believe it or not, I actually trust a lot of sellers on Etsy. And Etsy was actually this great find to me because I was able to find a lot of crystals and stones that I couldn't find anywhere, like anywhere at all. I can usually find them on Etsy. And often when purchasing crystals from Etsy, I would just really make sure that you look at the ratings and the reviews. And I basically only buy things from people that definitely have five stars across the board. And that is, I think, just a good way. And usually that's always been good for me. I've basically never had a problem with that. But also um, just be mindful too of like uh, where they're coming from. Because I've done this before where like I've purchased stuff and I realize it's coming from India or China. And not that that's a problem, but it might take a lot longer than you're uh, anticipating. So just to make sure if you want something like right away, Etsy does have a filter so that you can have stuff only from the United States, let's say. But depending on where you are, of course, too, that changes. But that's another just tip I would share because it's something that I've done to myself a few times. Because uh, there are some really good sites, though, that are in based in India. So if you don't mind waiting, it is worth it because there are some really good deals on some of the dealers there. And like I said, I will, um, I'll share that in the comments after the video, too, Amanda. Hi, Georgette. Okay, let's see. So what do I want to share next? Um... So, I think I want to talk about hmm, some more grounding stones. Yeah, okay. So, one of my favorite grounding stones is Healer's Gold, which again, I don't feel like a lot of people know about it. So, it's a mixture of pyrite and magnetite, which are both great minerals. So, pyrite known as like fool's gold, and I don't know if I have one here, I have one somewhere, but Magnetite, which I actually have right here, it's in resin because this was a smaller stone, but it kind of comes in this amazing like diamond shape. Now, magnetite is really cool because it's really activating for the whole etheric body and really helps align the chakras, aligns everything basically, and it kind of repairs any kind of issues with the aura or anything like that. And, uh, and then pyrite it's very activating for the solar plexus. It's very good for motivation, confidence, and having kind of command and power. It's really good for work situations or anything where you feel like you need to kind of have this sense of power. And it can just help you feel more confident in your choices, your words. But so the combination of this just makes a very helpful stone for energy drain. Now this I know can be, it's highly recommended for people that work in any kind of healing work. So whether that be mediumship, psychic, Reiki healer, really anything like that. So anything where you're constantly working with people and you're transferring energy with them, uh, it's, it's often really recommended to wear healer's gold on you. And that can usually help prevent energy drain if maybe you're not as trained to do that or you're not as good at maybe always conserving your energy when you're helping other people. Because I know for myself, I've gotten much better at that, but it can often be, um, sometimes it's challenging and sometimes it happens anyway. 
So this can be a very helpful tool if that's something that you're kind of constantly dealing with. And um, you can definitely find this on Etsy. Like I said, I'll, I'll share a link on that as well. And it's also just something that if you meditate with it, it can just feel very regenerating for your whole body. It kind of just refills your tank. It like refills any drained energy and restores that vitality, that energy. And then you don't end up having burnout. You don't end up having burnout. You don't feel drained. I'm not saying this to go crazy, <laughs> even if, you know, if you're wearing it, but it does definitely help prevent that from happening more often. And it will just give you a little bit more of a boost when you're doing that kind of stuff. Now, also, it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to be somebody that's in energy work to benefit from the stone either, though. This is just great, like, for example, if you work in an environment that's very draining, right, where you maybe have a lot of coworkers that can be kind of challenging to be around, or it's just a very demanding workspace. This, again, is also really helpful for that. So I really recommend it for anybody that feels drained a lot or feels like they need more energy. And then for more grounding stuff, so then I have um, dravite here. So it doesn't, it actually kind of looks like black tourmaline on the video, but it's actually, if you can see it in the sunlight, it's actually a really dark, almost coffee brown color. Let me see. So I don't know if you guys, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me see here possible uh, not quite a little hard to see but you can take my word for it it's a little bit translucent and kind of this ambery brown color now dravite is actually a form of tourmaline that again I think is pretty is not really well known probably because it's not the prettiest form of tourmaline you know it's this kind of dark brown color um, and often I think when it comes to tourmaline, people know about blue, watermelon, pink, rubellite, which is red, uh, and those are all great, but dravi often gets kind of, I think, forgotten. And I think that's unfortunate because it's a really good stone. Now, dravi in particular, it's basically just the ultimate grounding stone. And it's also like the ultimate stone for kind of working on shadow work, working on any kind of stuff from your past, any kind of trauma, anything like that that might be still stored in your body, in any kind of layer there, it's an excellent healing tool for that stuff. And really for anybody that's kind of trying to go on this path of enlightenment or you know enhance their spiritual life, it's a really, really good stone for kind of helping somebody along that path, especially if they're starting out. And let's say, it, it's just, it's really helpful in kind of bringing up things that we may not have noticed before that we need to work on or that we need to release from our bodies. It's going to kind of help us realize different blocks that we have, different things from our past that we've maybe even forgotten about that is still affecting us to this day. And kind of these like subliminal, you know, or subconscious behaviors that we carry or these belief patterns. It's really, really good for kind of shedding light on all of those things. And it's going to help you kind of notice them and then work through them, release them. And it's also a very grounding stone. Now this is actually, the thing about it is that I know it's not usually recommended for anybody that's trying to kind of open up psychically because it's not gonna let you do that. It's basically all about like you're staying down here and you're gonna focus on all your stuff that you need to resolve first. So that's why I would say like, if anybody is starting out in some kind of spiritual journey, it's a great tool to use when you're starting out and that will kind of help purify and cleanse all the stuff that maybe you would have kind of bypassed otherwise to kind of really give you a good base to start at when you're kind of working on your spiritual life. But then also when anybody's starting to feel like something keeps coming up, let's say for them, and they notice this pattern showing up and, and they know that it's trying to nudge them in some kind of direction about work that they need to do on them for themselves, right? And so this is a good stone to meditate with when you're feeling that way. And it will kind of help bring light to what that situation may be and to really help you again, to kind of release it so that you can go further. So for, especially also though, I think for anybody that feels like they need a break from maybe being up here all the time, because sometimes that's not always good, right? I mean, I think it's all about this balance. And I think sometimes it's very common for anybody that's working on development for psychic ability of any kind 
often we get super excited about this and then we kind of spend too much time in this center and then we can get kind of drained. And we also kind of forget to take care of the other aspects of ourself. So that's why this can be a really good stone to just hang out with for a day when you need like a recharge. So I definitely recommend that stone. And then one of my favorite grounding stones and protection stones is Jet, which is right here. Now, I've actually been asked by some people too, it can be really tricky sometimes to kind of tell the difference between different black stones, because there's a lot. There's a lot out there and they can be a little tricky. Now, I can tell you for sure, one of the ways to immediately recognize Jet Stone is that it's light as air. It feels like nothing. That's, that's its main trait. Hi, Patty. You're welcome. And so what's cool about Jet Stone is that it's basically coal. So it's a carbon compound that's from a mixture of driftwood and seafloor mud. So it has all these rich kind of minerals from that. And it's been, um, I believe it's called uh, lith lithification <laughs> is what happens to it. And what's interesting about Jetstone is that it's from like over 1500 BC. There's been jewelry and different talismans made out of Jetstone that have been found. So it's been used forever. So it has a lot of just ancient kind of wisdom to it. It's a very mystical stone. And that's the thing about Jetstone is that it's a little bit different from some of the other black kind of grounding stones. For example, like uh, black obsidian, which I have here which is probably one of the most common kind of go-to grounding protection stones. And it's great, it's very effective for that. Um, but Jetstone has a little bit of a more like ethereal vibration to it in addition to the grounding aspect of it, which is probably why I think I'm, I'm more drawn to it personally. It kind of has this dual uh, thing going on because it basically gives a lot of almost uh, it helps activate the third eye. It helps activate mysticism for people and this kind of magical, any kind of exploration with like tarot cards or psychic ability of any kind. It has a more higher vibration than most black stones. And actually just a fun fact is that similar to amber, I think amber is the only other mineral that um, does this, is that when it's rubbed with a cloth, it creates an electric charge, which I also thought was really just interesting. Hi, Pamela. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, and it's very grounding at the same time. And that's what I liked about it. So like in comparison to the Dravite, right? So Dravite is gonna be for somebody that wants a break from up here and really just wants to ground like crazy. Now, Jetstone, I wouldn't recommend for that because this is still gonna keep this channel very open but it's also going to ground you at the same time. And it's also very good at absorbing any kind of negative energy around you and it's going to kind of recycle it and help just revitalize you and use it for positive things. So I absolutely love this stone. It's probably out of all the grounding stones ever. It's the one that's resonated with me the most. So again, I think a lot of this about picking stones that are right for you, you really just need to kind of feel them out and work with one at a time and just kind of notice what worked for you better. And that's really how I kind of figured a lot of this stuff out for myself. I would just carry like one of these at a time to work with me. And then I'd even write down maybe at the end of the day, like what was different for me or how I felt it helped me or how it maybe didn't help me in that situation. And so it took a lot of trial and error over time to really figure that out. So again, it's just kind of a matter of just, you gotta feel that stuff out. And then um, another stone that I think is so, like no one seems to know about it. And forgive me if I say it wrong, because again, I'm a little dyslexic, but it's agarine, agarine, agarine. I think it's agarine. So that looks like this. Now I've only found this, I think in like one shop, one crystal shop in, I believe like Woodstock, New York. But again, it's pretty available on Etsy. And I will share some uh, links for that. Now this again, probably similar to Jetstone for me, I really resonate with this crystal. Um, it's probably my other favorite grounding stone. Now what's really awesome about these is that they form these kind of really nice, almost wand shapes. So they're really excellent healing tools. So similar to like a, um, 
a selenite wand like this one, right? Which you are pretty, that's a pretty common tool that people see for cleansing the body, you know, cutting cords. Uh, this stone is really great for the same thing and the same reason. It's a great healing tool. I use it a lot for body layouts on other people when I do Reiki. And it's also just great to carry around with you. It's very protective. It's really, really good at deflecting negativity. It really helps again with energy drain. So it really helps you not get impacted physically by like your outward situations. So this was something that I often carried to jobs that I was in that I was just not very happy in, or that would be very draining for me. This is something that I would carry with me, carry with me a lot. And it really did. I did notice that it really helped with that kind of energy drain and getting sucked into stuff that I really didn't need to pay attention to. And then also at the same time, it gives kind of this great boost of confidence for people and kind of gives you this motivation to do what you want to do and kind of pursue projects and just it kind of gives you this really great boost of confidence and this ability to manifest things more. So it's kind of unique for a grounding stone because not a lot of grounding stones kind of have that quality to it. So that's something that's also super unique about this one that I find really interesting and that I think I just really resonate with. So I will also, again, share this in the comments for everybody if they're interested. This was pretty lucky because it's kind of hard to find these just like this. They are, they're often sold in clusters, but I do recommend, which, you know, a cluster is just as good as a tool, but it's just going to be kind of a different impact because it's just going to have energy coming out a few different areas. So this is better if you really want it as like a healing tool or a wand. I really recommend looking for something like this. And then let's see what do I have here. Um, okay, yeah. So then another one is Axonite. Now this looks really like unappealing because this is in resin. It's a very fragile crystal and also it's a little rare and a little expensive. So this was one of those stones that I ended up putting in resin. Now it's a little blue because I think part of my jean pocket got like stuck to it. So again, not the most appealing looking. Uh, so I'm sorry about that but it is a fabulous stone. And one of the things about this one in particular is that it's very, very grounding. And I also found really helped with my energy and also helped with brain fog for me. Um, and also though, it really activates the third eye actually. It's like probably one of the more spiritual or more like upper chakra activating grounding stones, which again is sometimes hard to find. And I just really recommend this as well. For anyone it kind of has a similar feeling to jetstone and that other one agarine uh they're all kind of similar in that way that they all kind of share a little bit of an etheric property or like this higher realm property to them while also being very grounding so that's why that type of grounding stone i really recommend for people that are opening up and maybe feel overwhelmed by what they're getting and just like don't know how to kind of control it yet those are all very helpful because you won't feel like you're stifling any of that opening up, but you're still gonna help kind of slow it down a little bit and control it a little bit so that you don't feel so burnt out and overwhelmed. And actually another one of those I also recommend is Flintstone, and that's right here. Now there's actually quite a few types of Flintstone as well. And I also love this stone, and again, it's very similar to all of those other ones that I just shared with you. It activates all the higher up chakras, but I know one thing in particular with it though, is that it's very good at kind of pulling higher energy down into your body. So it's very good at helping if somebody's trying to kind of retrieve or even like with channeling, let's say, it can really help us kind of retrieve that information and it kind of solidifies it more so that we're more able to share it with others. Like if we're trying to do a reading for somebody, it can really kind of help take this higher up energy that maybe feels a little bit un inaccessible, right? And it ends up making it more tangible for us and more, uh, it gives us this ability to really kind of grip onto it more. And so it's very helpful for people that are in development and are trying to work on having more of a control or handle on the things that they're bringing in. So again, I really recommend this for that. And then since I'm kind of going in a psychic direction, I'll go to some of those stones. So one of the stones that I felt drawn to talk about today was um, covalite. Now covalite 
is amazing. And again, something that I don't see a lot, if you can see it here, it kind of has these a lot of like blue metallic sheen to it. Now this tumble stone that I have, uh, it doesn't really show that, but there's other parts of it. I think usually when they're not tumbled, it literally looks just like jet blue, like shiny metallic material. It's really pretty. I've actually had that like ground up before and I put it in resin, but it's a really beautiful stone. And it's known for basically creating a bridge between dimensions. And this is also often found in copper mines or where copper is around. Um, it does contain some copper. And it's really good at basically kind of creating this more of a handle on other dimensions. So when we're trying to work on accessing other planes of existence and other areas to kind of shift our focus, this stone can really help make that process a lot easier. I think it's very common when we're starting out with development of any kind that it almost feels like, let's say the spirit world, right? It feels kind of inaccessible. It feels far away for some reason. Oh, you have cobalite, yay. Yeah, I love this stone. You know, it, sometimes it can feel like we need to do some crazy ritual or we need to like go somewhere to get there. And the thing is, is that's, that's not true. I think that's, again, that's our human brain kind of getting in the way. I truly believe that all of these dimensions exist right on top of each other at all times. And it's really just a matter of just shifting our focus. But again, I was the same way when I started opening up. Um, I, for a long time, when I started doing readings, I would do this whole thing where I like imagine going through a tunnel, right, to get to the spirit world. And I don't do that anymore, but I think it's a very common uh, tool that, that does definitely help and I think is really beneficial when you're starting out. But basically, covalite is going to really help with that process and it's going to make it just feel easier, more natural to access those other areas. And it's going to kind of empower you and make you just feel more confident in what you're doing. So I really recommend this for anybody that's new in development or even experienced. It's just a very helpful stone to kind of bridge those gaps. And it can just make the process of retrieving information a lot more smooth so that you're able to give as much information as you can to people that you're trying to help with readings, let's say. It's just gonna allow you to have more information for them because you won't be spending so much time trying to retrieve it. Okay, and then I wanted to share um, brokite. Now brokite is really, really cool. And it's usually seen as these kind of like dark metallic cubes is how it's formed. But I actually have it, it's in quartz as an inclusion. I'm trying to show you. It's kind of these like black little whispers of the brokite inside this quartz crystal. Now, brokite is insanely high vibration. It's a very, very strong stone. So again, for people that are interested in opening up this area and really expanding their third eye, highly recommend this. Uh, this is a great stone to meditate with, kind of laying down and placing it on the third eye. And you'll immediately feel it. It's very, very strong. So sometimes I'll do that. It's Something that I often like carrying with me for readings sometimes, it can just really help expand this whole area. And often I find when I'm holding it or I'm meditating with it, it brings a lot of heat to the body. It just, you can kind of feel that energy and that vibration really raise up in your whole body. It's very strong. And, and again, this is a very small stone, but it packs a lot of energy into that little bit. You don't need a lot of it, which is also helpful, I think, sometimes, because some higher vibrational crystals, a lot of them are more rare and they can be quite small. But the good thing about it is that they are so strong that it really isn't that big of a problem. So, again, I really recommend Brokite. It's a really great stone for opening and activating the third eye. And then, again, this I actually only have in resin, but also somebody, I think Donnie, he had um, recommend or he had asked me to recommend things for neurological issues. So one thing that I will share about that is that often a lot of stones that are considered really high vibration are going to be good for neurological issues because they're very activating to the third eye and crown chakra areas. They're all also part of that whole, whole, um, mental area and kind of activating the mind and activating the nervous system. 
So that's something that I would de definitely recommend for that. Now, so I have two crystals in here. So there's a natural light, which is the more opaque one that you see there. And then the one that's basically kind of just disappeared in the resin, that's penicite. And again, these are both pretty expensive crystals. As you can see, I have a very small, they're very small. That's why I put them in resin. And they also, um, they go great together. So that's why I actually put them together in this little tool. And um, penicite has, its name actually comes from, I think it's the Greek word for the great deceiver. And that's because it looks very similar to a lot of other minerals because it's just kind of clear. So it's been confused for quartz before, stuff like that but it is very different from quartz. It's really strong. I really recommend penicite for people that feel like they never feel anything from crystals and people that just feel like they don't. Cause I know actually Sherry, I know that you were asking about that. Like, why don't you feel crystals like heat up in your hand? And um, it's not that necessarily like this kind of thing is going to give you that sensation, but I think working with something really high vibrational like that can really help somebody that's having a hard time connecting with that energy in that kind of way or getting a physical sensation from it. So laying down with this stone on your third eye, you'll feel something. <laughs> That's for sure. I mean, I'd be very surprised if really anybody didn't feel something from it. Uh, and same with natural light as well. They're both considered, I think, some of the top like three most high vibrational minerals out there. So they're excellent for opening up that area for beginners, Experts, doesn't matter. They're amazing tools for that. So higher vibrational than moldavite. And I'm trying to remember, oh, brokite. Um, you know, I would say that they're, the thing is, is I feel like they're just, they're kind of different in their energy. It's not that necessarily they're more higher vibrational than moldavite than the other, which is, I know we're talking about brokite here. Um, but it's definitely, they're definitely up there together. I think that it is a little bit more intense, at least in the way that I feel it for myself. Uh, but again, that can be different for other people. But I would just say that they're both kind of in that category together. It wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say that it's like stronger than Moldavite. Because Moldavite is really strong. So they kind of have a similar uh, effect. Now, another crystal I wanted to share was, um, was this Iolite Sunstone. Now, Iolite is this beautiful purple kind of glittering gemstone that you'll find at most stores now. I, I see it around a lot. And that's a great stone for the third eye. It's really, really good for creativity and kind of inspiration, bringing more ideas to the mind. But it's also a very psychically activating stone because of that. Now, what's really cool is that it does come uh, mixed in with sunstone. So you can kind of see it here. So there's a little bit like that white spot there. That's some sunstone in there. And um, that's a really, really cool combination because basically it takes the energy of sunstone, which is very activating for the sacral and solar plexus areas. So it's really good for creativity. It's really good for manifestation, confidence, creativity, like creating things. If you're any kind of person that's creative or artistic, it's really helpful stone for artist block or writer's block, you know, anything when you're feeling a little bit like stuck and you don't feel that inspired. And what's really great is that this combination really takes that benefit to like another level because it's giving all that great fire energy from sunstone. And then it's mixing in these, this uh, third eye activating stone of Iolite to really provide awesome um, ability with uh, creativity and inspiration. It will really help activate that area to kind of bring ideas into your mind. So it, it's really even more beneficial because it's basically allowing you to get opened up here and retrieve ideas from spirit or channeling that. And then the sunstone kind of helps you do it. It helps you just activate all that. And it's really, really helpful for manifestation. So I love this stone and it's something that I'll always kind of carry on me when I'm making art of any kind, when I'm drawing, when I'm making things for my jewelry business, anything like that, I always carry this with me. So I really, really recommend this stone. It's awesome. Hi, Molly. Yay. I know. I love sunstone. Oh, thanks. Okay. And then let's see. Since I was talking about manifestation, 
I have a folder right here, which is really, really unique and cool, and it's kind of rare. So I'll show you here. It literally looks like a straw. And this is actually sand that was struck by lightning, which is really cool. <laughs> and that's why it's pretty rare. But it basically crystallizes the sand into this tube where the lightning struck. And these are amazing tools for manifestation. I know uh, there's like a practice that people talk about where you basically meditate with the stone and um, you, t you think about what you want to manifest or something that you're really trying to bring into your life. And that could be really anything. And then you actually blow into it and kind of it's like you're blowing that intention into this tube. And it's supposed to help activate the stone and kind of program it to do whatever you need it to do for you. So I think that's a very unique and interesting mineral, but it's really cool for people that want to practice with more maybe unique rituals with stones. It just kind of gives this other twist to stuff that I think people don't always see. So I think it's a really, really interesting uh, mineral and it has a really interesting energy to it. It's a little fragile, but it's actually much stronger than you might think. Uh, so I really wanted to share that because I just think it's a really unique and interesting thing. Okay, and then another one I wanted to share is a spirolite gem shell, gemstone, or I guess, yeah, it's a gem shell. <laughs> and these are amazing. I'm in love with these. So it's agatized, it's an agatized seashell, basically. And they're found in um, an area in India. And they're connected with the god uh, Vishnu. And these are a little expensive. I think this was like $70 because they are, they're like, like over a million years old and they're pretty difficult to find, but they're definitely worth it. I definitely recommend it. And these are really, really great for any kind of healing. And the reason for that is they contain this unbelievable spiral energy to them. And I wasn't really sure like what that was gonna feel like or anything when I first got it. And then when I meditated with it for the first time, I really did feel that. So it's really hard to even describe, but it creates this like spiral-like feeling of this kind of wave-like feeling over your whole body as you're holding it. And the spiral is really known for, again, kind of cleansing the body, really helping with health and vitality it really helps just bring a lot of life and zest back into your physical body, your auric field. It kind of heals on really all levels and layers within you and has a very unique vibration to it. And they're also just really pretty. So I really recommend these. These are a very unique stone for um, healing of any kind. And also kind of similar to um, ammonite fossils, which I know I have a lot of them on my website as necklace pieces. But those, again, are very similar to fossilized, and they have that spiral energy in them. And again, which is very activating for the whole chakra column. It's very activating for the whole body. So the spiral, if you can find that in different minerals, it's something that can be a very helpful tool to kind of add to your collection. So I really wanted to share that for that reason. And then we have, um, let's see here. Oh yeah, I really wanted to share this because this is a pretty unique one. So right here I have, um, it's called rhodazite. So they're really, really tiny. They actually kind of look similar to raw diamonds, which look very similar, but these are really small. But they are actually really very strong energy, like very strong. <laughs> And uh, you can usually buy them as like a bag of a few, right? You can get like kind of a collection of like 30 or something. They are a little expensive, but they are really worth it. I really recommend this for anybody that makes their own healing tools or anybody that really is interested in like creating healing tools. Or also, um, this is another kind of unique way to amplify the energy of your other crystals. Now, uh, rhodazite, is in itself very activating for the solar plexus and the third eye. But again, and it also just is kind of energizing for the whole body. So it's a really great stone for anybody that has brain fog or a kind of chronic fatigue. I know I've made uh, some necklaces with it. That's just this stone. 
because in itself it's a really great crystal and is very very energizing can really help with again like the solar plexus area and actually um and one of the books that I have, it said to like tape it to your solar plexus under your shirt. And I actually did that a few times, which I wouldn't, I don't know, I wouldn't always <laughs> recommend that because it kind of was uncomfortable. But I did notice that it did something. So, I mean, if you want to try it, go for it. And, uh, you know, let me know how that goes. <laughs> I also have it in resin here. I have quite a few of them in resin. And again, so the thing about this stone is that Although, you know, it does have its own kind of properties to it, it's pretty neutral energy-wise, which is what makes it really unique and special. Because basically, if you put this in your hand with another crystal, so really any crystal, and you have them touching in your hand, and then you compare that to just holding the stone without them, you'll immediately notice that there's a big difference in that energy that you're feeling. Because it basically amplifies any stone that it's touching or is on. It amplifies that crystal times a billion. It takes it to like a crazy level. And you don't, you only need even like just one. Sometimes though, but you can do like a few if you want. Uh, it depends on how much you want to amplify it. But what makes it so special for this kind of tool or technique is that it, it's able to remain very neutral for its own energy. So it just kind of is a chameleon because any stone that it's in contact with, it's going to just let that stone kind of take over and it will only amplify that stone's properties. It's not gonna mix in with it really or change it that much. So that's why it's a really, really great tool for a crystal, let's say that you maybe only have a small one and you wanna amplify the benefit out of that stone. This is a really great tool to have. I often will carry a little pouch with some crystals and I'll just throw a few rhodazite in there to kind of mix them all together and it just helps amplify everything that's in there. So these are super cool. And I know some people, um, you can like glue, you can even glue them onto other crystals to just kind of supercharge them. And they're also, they never need to be cleansed. They're just this infinite source of amplification and energy. So they're also really great for even cleansing other crystals. Um, but yeah, you can make healing tools with them. So like even for example, you could do like this selenite wand I know like some people you can uh, glue like the little row design on there in like a row and that would take this thing through the roof. <laughs> so I think these are really cool because I don't think I ever really see them uh, really anywhere, unfortunately. And I really think people should know about them because I think they're such a helpful tool for amplifying stones. Sherry, do you believe we can't receive benefits from holding a crystal in our right hand only for sending? Personally, no, I, I don't believe that. Um, again, I think there are so many rules or ideas out there about stones. And the thing is, is that those things can be very helpful. They can be a way to help us guide into, you know, just when we're trying to learn about stones. But ultimately, I really just feel like the best benefit you can get out of stones is when you really trust your own intuition and what you're feeling. So for you, you may feel that your right hand is a receiving hand for you. And then that's great. And that's probably just the way it is for you. It may not be, you know, that that's the case for everyone. But I know for me, I've never been picky about like, what side of my body am I holding this on? Or what hand am I holding this in? And how is that going to impact that flow? I've never really been somebody that's uh, really impacted by that. I, I kind of just go with what I'm feeling. Um, and often like I'll just feel stones sometimes in both hands is usually what I do because that kind of creates this energy current through your body. So I'm also going to be doing another video on actually I don't even think I mentioned this earlier. I'm going to definitely be doing some videos on working with stones and things that I personally do and just other recommendations I have for working with crystals. So that's definitely also another video Sherry that I'll be doing that you can watch uh, and I can definitely touch on that as well. So let's see here. Now I want to show you, um, yeah, so Shiva Lingam, which again, these are actually pretty common and I mean found in a lot of crystal shops. I have this awesome one. I love this thing. Now these come from the Narmada River in West India and I believe it's one of the India's seven holy sites and I guess the village people there, they take the stones out of this river and they polish them into this shape.
Now they are representative of uh, Shiva and are more phallic, like so sometimes more male energy. But at the same time, they're actually not necessarily just designated for male energy. They're meant to really kind of contain female and male energy. And they're also known to represent the cosmic egg uh, of just like life force and everything. And um, they're really, really helpful for balancing things. So again, because they kind of represent all different polarities and kind of both of them. So this is a really good stone for kind of bringing everything into alignment and really helping you kind of get the most out of both sides of you. So your male and female energies, this is a really great way to kind of encapsulate that into a way for you to really maximize benefit out of that. And if you feel like you kind of lean one way or the other or whatever, you want to tap into another side of that, this can kind of help them harmonize with each other. And I also find that the stone is very energizing and very good for creativity of any kind. So when I'm feeling like really fatigued or kind of tired or drained, sometimes I'll meditate with this crystal and it will, it will kind of help reactivate me and kind of bring some new energy into my body. And I find it's very, um, very inspirational as a stone. Whenever I'm trying to create new things or think of new ideas, I'll often hold this with me. So I love these stones and they can be used for a lot of other things too. I mean, I'm only kind of scratching the surface with that, but they're actually really cheap too uh, for something this big. I think honestly, I think this is only like $25, which is a really good price for something of this size. So I highly recommend them because again, they're a great way to kind of get something maybe bigger and it's not that much money and you can really kind of experience that and really work with it. It's a great tool. I think the shape as, as well is just really a good shape for healing and any kind of meditation. You kind of just get a lot of benefit out of that. So I really love these stones. And actually what's interesting is that I have a smaller one and um, one of the first times, actually no, I think that was the first time. The first time I ever uh, slept with a crystal under my pillow, it was a Shiva Langham and it, gave me like the most insane uh, spirit visitation dream I've like ever had. So that's also something interesting to explore with that as well. Because I don't think that's a very commonly used crystal for that practice. So it, you can always get kind of like interesting or different things out of different stones with that. Thank you. I gravitate to holding in my right hand. Yeah, so go for it. Definitely do it then. Uh, yeah, because that's the thing. You just got to kind of go with what you're feeling pulled to. So then let's see. Um, then I have a couple of heart stones I wanted to share is um so this is Rosafia and it's actually from the Rocky Mountains in the US and it was only discovered in uh, 2008 and it is a form of feldspar now other examples of feldspar would be um, amazonite and actually labradorite so feldspar it kind of has those weird like it's a little hard to explain but sometimes it'll have kind of this striping in it that looks a little clear, but uh, here, actually, let me see. I have Amazonite here. So this is actually a pretty good example of that. So when you see like those um, lines kind of in the stone like that, that's often very similar to how feldspar is going to look. And it also tends to have that kind of sheen to it or that metallic look, um, which you can't see that well here, but that is partially what this mineral is. Now, this stone is really interesting because... It's actually named after like the divine being Sophia, which I believe is like the soul of the world. And it's known to tap into that energy, which is really, really cool and has a lot of kind of goddess energy to it. And it's very unique as a heart stone because it kind of has this other more etheric feeling to it. That's not maybe something that you're going to see with a lot of heart stones like rose quartz, for example. And it's something that kind of, it's like, it's like a heart stone, but then it has this really high vibration to it. Like you feel it very strongly and it's very soothing. And sometimes people uh, sleep with it under their pillow. And I know for some people though, it's a little too intense. And I kind of feel like I'm kind of like that. I find it very relaxing, but again, it's something that you can kind of even use for like astral travel in some ways or connecting to divine beings because it's gonna kind of help you connect to like the divine, like heart of the world, basically that whole kind of energy. So it is very healing for that reason. It can be kind of a good way to remind yourself that 
we're part of this whole, you know, and it, it, it's very helpful when we're feeling maybe a little bit disconnected spiritually and can kind of remind us of like what we really are and what we're really connected to. So that's why this is very unique as a heart stone, because it's it's so much more than just activating the heart center. It's much more about kind of that spiritual connection to the whole world and the whole universe even. So this is again, also a little rare, kind of hard to find, but I highly recommend it. And then um, I have rhodochrosite and I have this little egg here, which is really cute. And this stone does tend to be pretty expensive but I think it's worth it. I mean, this was, I think, like $25, which is a little pricey for how little it is, but it's a really good shape. Anything like I, I think I had shared in the other video, if something's polished really smooth, it's pretty beneficial because you're going to get that energy like all around. And this stone especially is probably the best for self-healing. So I, I say even more than rose quartz. And I mean, this is just for me, but I find that this stone is excellent for anybody that has a history of abuse, trauma, PTSD that they're dealing with, any kind of issues just with self-image, uh, eating disorders, uh, addiction, anything where it's like kind of self-destruction or things like that. Um, this stone is really, really helpful as an ally in kind of working through that stuff and healing ourselves. So I love this stone for that. So whenever you're starting to have like self-doubt or you feel like you're going into kind of negative areas with negative self-talk or things like that, and let's say like maybe there's a new pattern coming up that's kind of bringing up old wounds or old things, this is a really good stone to carry with you for a few days or even meditate with and to really help kind of tune into what that is and to really nurture yourself and help you kind of work through it. And then it also just has a very comforting energy and it can be very helpful when you're feeling kind of scared or alone. It can just kind of provide that companionship almost or just this feeling that you're like, you can kind of calm down and relax and you feel almost held by it. And it's also really helpful for people that suffer from social anxiety too. Because again, I think it's just tapping into that whole idea of self-love because I think a big part of social anxiety is that kind of self-doubt or judging ourselves, right? So I think that's also why that's very good with this stone. Then another heart stone that I really love is Morganite, which is actually, um, I found is actually used a lot um, as like a fake diamond alternative. And they're actually a great alternative for that. One interesting thing is that any stone that you're gonna find like cut like a diamond is going to have the most amplification of its energy just because of those perfect angles and that concentration in the cut. So they're great as like a gift for a significant other even because they really kind of represent the whole meaning of just love and that vibration uh, to a degree that I find even more impactful than rose quartz uh, in my own experience with it. Now Morganite too is a little less kind of with the rhodochrosite, it's a little less with like the self-love and that's part of it, but it's more kind of similar to the Rosafia in the sense that it's more about kind of divine love and feeling and using, kind of tapping into that infinite amount of energy of love from the universe that we can constantly use as a sense of just revitalization, healing. We can use that energy for anything in our life that we feel we need to work on. So this is a great way to be able to kind of tap into that infinite, uh, endless, just unconditional love from the universe and to really activate the heart center. So it's a really great gift to give to a significant other because it just kind of is all about that beautiful harmony and that beautiful energy and bringing that into your space. And um, yeah, I just really recommend it for anybody that wants to do opening of the heart area and just tap into any healing work with themselves and even with relationships too. It can really help just kind of bring a lot more peace to somebody and it can also be very soothing. And then um, lastly, I have golden healer quartz because again, I know there were some requests with stuff for healing. So this I shared in the other video. But so this, and this is what's interesting because I found that there's kind of two types of golden healer quartz because basically this would be the more traditional sense of it because it's going to have this almost like a matte look to it. 
And that's because of a kind of coating of hematite on the outside layer of the stone. And these are found in Arkansas, I think exclusively. So that's that. And then the other type of healer quartz that you're gonna find is looks like this. And that's where there's actually iron inclusions and some hematite inside the crystal. So that's where it's different. And this is actually a golden healer Herkimer diamond from only, they're only from Herkimer, New York. So you can see that there. So they're a little different with what they kind of do for you. I'll just start by saying with the kind of traditional style of uh, golden healer, healer from Arkansas, I know that they're known for Christ consciousness. So that kind of golden healing light energy and bringing in very high vibration. I definitely feel this like when I meditate with it, it's something that you can feel very strongly. It has a kind of this pulsating almost to it. Um, so it's very good for kind of bringing in this like divine being or divine higher energy to it, uh, to you and into your space. It can really help you connect with spirit guides or uh, ascended masters, angels, things like that. It's just something that's kind of like this beam of light for that energy. And in general, it's just kind of kind of take over all the cells in your body and just replenish them. So it's an excellent stone to have for anybody that deals with like chronic pain, which is something that I deal with. So that can be very, very helpful for that. Now, what's interesting about um, these with the iron, so it's a little bit of a different kind of vibration to them. They do have a lot of similarities in how they feel from my own experience, but I feel like these almost feel a little more grounding to me uh, and almost just kind of like, I don't know, it's like they kind of do more healing almost in an internal way, almost just like how it presents itself in the stone is kind of what I feel from them. I feel like with these, it's a little more etheric healing. And it's a little more about that kind of outward energy, like the auric field, right? And it that, and that can also impact the physical body, but I just feel like it kind of comes in a different way. Like that's how that energy is brought in, is a little different. Whereas with these, I almost feel like because this is like from the inside out. And now the interesting thing with Herkimer diamonds, and this is good because this will kind of go into what I was going to share before. Um, so I was sharing some different types of quartz formations in the first video. And I actually forgot to share two. So I wanted to share this because you'll understand in a second. Um, so this is called Fenster Quartz, as you can see here. And what's interesting about it is that it actually... In, when it comes to like the mineral market and uh, all of that, they hate this mineral <laughs> because it has like no clarity to it for quartz, right? Uh, so it's not considered of any kind of high value to people that are in that market because it's just not going to cut well. It's not going to sell well for any kind of jewelry. But that's kind of good for us because it actually is very reasonable price-wise because of that. Now, Fenster Quartz is actually, so Fenster actually is window in German. So that's where that name comes from. And that's because basically the reason that these have such a, uh, they don't have a lot of clarity is because they have all of these unbelievable like pockets and different little chambers and walls and windows basically formulated inside the crystal. And they're very activating for the third eye and upper chakras. They're really, really good for any kind of clairvoyance they really help with inner vision and kind of expanding that. And they're excellent for astral travel as well. So just exploring other realms in general. And um, you probably can't hear it. And it's also, you kind of can't see it all the time because it kind of moves all over the place. Oh, oh, you can kind of see it, but you can probably not. There's, there's water inside of it. So which is called an anhydro crystal, which is really cool because that's basically means that water um, like millions of years ago got trapped inside the stone as it was forming and you're going to find that quite often in this type of quartz because of so many of those little chambers that are inside of it and the reason that i brought this up with the uh the herkimer diamond is that they actually are very very similar in the way that they form if you can kind of see because this is a very unique formation, Herkimer diamonds. They're only found like this, basically, you know, in Herkimer, New York. Now, these, though, are of a higher quality and a higher value because of their clarity. So that's like the main difference between these two. 
but they're both very activating for the third eye, very activating for psychic work of any kind. Herkimer in particular, I know is really well known for dream work and any kind of kind of lucid dreaming or anything like that. So these are both great stones. So I definitely recommend them for anyone. And then I know the one other thing that I had forgotten was to talk about um, a cluster like this. That's kind of just a raw form that has multiple points all over it. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is just that these are really great for like any room in your home and anywhere that you want to kind of purify the energy. Because again, it has energy kind of coming from all over the place. And it's really great for also charging stones. You can kind of put them on a cluster like this. This one isn't the best for it because it's not very flat, but there's a lot of options with that. And um, these are just great. I have like this in like my bathroom. So for kind of chilling out, like when I have a bath or something, they're really good at just kind of covering a lot of basis, like uh, space wise and giving you a lot of recharge and just good energy in your environment. So that's why I just wanted to touch on that. And then um, I have Credite, which is a crazy looking crystal. So this is orange Credite. It does also come in white. And it basically looks like this little sea urchin. And this is a very high vibrational crystal. It's kind of hard to find, but it's really cool. You can find it in like these little tiny balls too. And they're really cute. <laughs> so they don't only just like look really awesome, but similar to what I was just talking about with like the quartz cluster is that they just have this ball energy of just all this different, all these tiny little points as if you can see. So it has this amazing energy that just expands out of every angle on it. And it's very activating for the upper chakras and for astral travel, for connecting to other beings, um, exploring other realms. It's, and also just kind of supercharges your whole system. It kind of cleanses everything, purifies your cells. It's a very, very activating crystal. I think it's actually known also as some kind of like key to the universe for spiritual information that's available. So it's a very activating, it's great for like Akashic records. So anything like that, like ancient wisdom that you want to connect to. I really love this crystal for that. And I think that's everything. I think the last thing that I had to share was just this big blue calcite that I have. And I keep this right next to my bed. Now blue calcite, one, one of the things that I like about a lot of calcite is again, it's very affordable. So, cause I think this was like pretty cheap, to be honest, you can get a really big piece for a very reasonable price. And they're all around just kind of a good stone to go with when you're kind of starting out a collection or just looking for a good healing stone in general. Blue calcite in particular, also green is really, really good for anxiety. It's very good for emotional healing and soothing. Green calcite is more for like the heart center and also for like social anxiety, uh, any kind of self doubt. Whereas blue calcite is more for kind of just anxiety in general. And it's more of a psychically activating stone. I know that it also can help with, I guess, ESP or like telepathy. And also it's very activating for dream work. So that's one of the reasons I actually keep it next to my bed. I don't find that it like makes it hard to sleep or anything, but it can just kind of enhance your dreams and make it easier to remember them. And again, though, everybody's different with that. So it can vary person to person, but it's something you can definitely try. So I'm pretty sure that's everything I had today. Um, yeah. <laughs> so again, if you guys have any questions, if you have anything you want me to recommend, please just comment and let me know. I will definitely be sharing all the names of these stones so that you can look them up in the comments. And I can also share some trusted sites that I buy stones from. And um, also I wanted to just briefly mention that I recently advertised that I'm going to be doing a course with Laura Mazada, the Akashic therapist called Thrive. And this is all based on dealing with chronic illness and healing it at every level, level within yourself, physical, mental, spiritual, and so forth. And really having this deep sense of healing and where chronic illness can kind of find itself and get stuck in. And it's really all about taking your chronic illness and allowing it to kind of be this key to empower you and make you thrive and make you feel amazing and not let it be this thing that kind of takes over and controls your life. So 
I'm really excited for that. Um, it's something that me and Laura, we both have dealt with chronic illness. And uh, so we're very passionate about it. Very excited to share the things that have worked for us personally to be able to really use it as really like a super kind of superhuman tool because it really can be that. And I think unfortunately there's a lot of people out there that don't know that or don't think that that's possible. Because unfortunately, I think there's a lot of misconceptions about chronic illness out there and sometimes it can just, like even with Western medicine and such, uh, we don't always get the right messages about that and we can feel pretty hopeless. So if you know anyone at all that's dealing with chronic illness, whether that be physical or, or mental, definitely let them know about this program because I'm really excited to share it with others and I think it could be of great help to really anyone. So. I'm actually going to be going live with Laura uh, at 5 p.m. this Saturday to talk about all of this stuff. So definitely join us if you can. And that's going to be on her page, um, Emerge Healing and Wellness. And of course, if anyone is interested in working with me or booking a session with me, you can go to daisyfarrellmedium.com. You can follow my page and all of my information is on there. I also have um, another site, which is just daisyfarrell.com. And that's where all my crystal healing jewelry and tools are available. So again, if anybody ever has any questions or wants to reach out, please don't hesitate to message me. And uh, I'm excited to see you guys next week. I will kind of figure out what I feel pulled to talk about next week uh, with the crystals. And I hope you have a beautiful day and a great weekend. All right, everybody. Bye.